Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video, we're taking a look at the Logitech MX Creative Console. Available at Best Buy now, this unique duo aims to increase your efficiency on all creative projects. The basic premise behind the Creative Console is to be creative. It's in the name, but it's to actually increase the efficiency and to make it a lot simpler and a lot faster to do things you want to do. This is a double-edged sword because if you already know your shortcuts on a keyboard, then how can this make it easier for you? Well, we're gonna get into that. I, one thing I, it's gonna be hard for me to get into here is the entire setup process because that is, it is a little bit time consuming and tedious, mainly because there's just so much customization involved. Uh, Logitech does a better job in running you through that process. There's a, a, a bunch of videos that they offer that show you step-by-step -step how you can do those things. But we're gonna touch on a lot of the basics and also what you can expect out of this. So first and foremost, it's important to note that I have the two devices. You have a dial pad and you have a keypad. The keypad is the one that plugs into your computer via USB, whereas the dial pad connects to it via Bluetooth. The dial pad can actually connect up to three computers at the same time. So you can actually switch to them by uh, clicking this one uh, button below. Again, not as convenient as clicking something on top, but at least you can connect to more than one device. The key, uh, keypad, on the other hand, is something that needs to be plugged in at all times in order for it to work. So it, you don't have to worry about charging it because obviously it's getting its power from the laptop. But the point is that you're programming the buttons that are on it. In most cases, well, at least for the apps that are supported or for the profiles, as Logitech calls them, that are supported, there will be pre-populated buttons for you, but you can always add more what are called pages. So if you want to add more button controls, you can do that too. The hardware part is actually the easy part because Logitech has already done most of the work, right? You have a dial, you have a roller, you have buttons. So that part's easy. It's a software part that makes this more interesting because that's where everything is configured. Logi it's the Logi Options Plus software. So this replaces the previous Logi Options software. In order for this to work, you actually have to remove the previous software and then add uh, Options Plus. Not only that, but for Windows PC or Mac, you also have to be upgraded. So for Mac OS, it's, it's over uh, OS uh, 13. Uh, but again, even then you might run into some, some snags or, or, or issues with compatibility simply because maybe you might, there might be software that you might want to use, so whether it's Photoshop or another Adobe program that may not install the profile properly simply because your OS is out of date. I know, this is, I'm just scratching the surface here of some of the intricacies that are involved with this. Uh, this is the kind of device that is going to require some, some time and effort, at least so that you get it right but also so that you know how everything works. The app, now the software is intuitive. It's not unintuitive. You simply just, there's a command that you want on one of the keypad buttons. You just sort of drag and drop it and that's all. That part is easy. So knowing where the buttons are and how you want to populate them is not necessarily the hard part. The hard part is to make sure that everything works to begin with. And that is where Logitech really at some points makes things a little difficult because you may want a program to work, but it may not be available. For example, this is this thing is, the Creative Console is very Adobe heavy right now. So Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Audition, Premiere Pro, Illustrator, these are the main programs in the Adobe suite so far that are supported. Uh, there is no Bridge, unfortunately, or Camera Raw, so for those, or even Lightroom CC. So if you want the cloud-based Lightroom, that's not supported yet. Logitech says it's coming, we'll see. Either way, the, the point is that there are other apps, so Spotify and YouTube Music on the music side, for example. So Microsoft Office isn't supported, but Teams for Business is. Uh, you have uh, Capture One as an alternative for photography, for example. Uh, you also have, what else? You have Philips Hue, there's that, there's some integration there. Some of it is already laid out for you, some of it is that you have to do it yourself. So while you can tap into the Philips Hue lights that you might have, you have to actually set up the keypad to control those things. Not hard to do, but again, just an extra step that you gotta take in some cases. When things work, so when you have an app that you're working with and you're using either of these devices, you'll find that there's they actually work quite well. There's an excellent amount of precision in the dial pad in particular, and the dial pad is an extra feature called Actions Ring. So this is where you press a button, and wherever the cursor is on the screen, it'll there'll be a, a, rotal, a rotary menu that shows up that you can then select from that is with, contextually within the program you're using. So if it's Photoshop, it'll be for that. If it's Lightroom Classic, it'll be for that. You can repopulate these, you can move them around, rearrange them however you like. Uh, that's up to you. 
but the point is that you still have to access whatever it is you see on screen with a mouse or a trackpad. So there's no way to actually use the tile to select what it is you want, what you, whatever you want on the screen, which I, to me, felt a little bit unintuitive when I was using it. But again, it's one of those extra features that's on there from the dial pad. And when you are making a selection, so for example, in Photoshop, if I'm trying to adjust brightness or saturation or contrast or something like that, something basic, the dial just does that. So if I move it to you know one way or the other, it'll lower it or raise it. And it's, it can be very, very precise. Same thing, if I choose a brush and I wanna change the size of that brush, I can have a corresponding button on the keypad, I press that, and then I can use the dial to adjust the size of that brush. And you see the number increase or decrease on the keypad itself. There's some really cool features there. And even within the keypad, there are submenus. So if you're choosing, for example, you wanna choose something in Photoshop. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do this, but you can choose an option in Photoshop that then gives you a submenu that shows up on the keypad. Understandably, you have to sort of look at the keypad in order to know what it is you're pressing, but the idea is that you can access certain features a lot quicker. So if you wanna create a layer mask on Photoshop, for example, you can set up the key just to do that. If you wanna set a levels mask or a curves mask, you can do that too. Again, if you know the keyboard shortcuts already for these things, then this may not feel like it's all that different to you, but if you don't know those features or you don't know how to get to them necessarily, then I can see the advantage. That's why this may be more advantageous to those who are beginners or intermediates as opposed to seasoned professionals simply because professionals already know where everything is and really have set workflows. These two devices would have to complement that. So your level of expertise could determine how much or how useful you see the Creative Console being. I should mention that the keypad and the dial pad can also access system features as well. So whether it's Mac OS or Windows, you can access certain things within each. So if I want to go to the Finder on, on Mac OS, I can do that. If I want File Explorer on Windows, a certain just a single button push can do that too. I actually like the keypad a lot as an app launcher. So you can uh, populate the key, key, keypad with whatever apps you have already installed in your on your computer. And it could be anything. So it doesn't matter if the keypad supports extra features or, or the, the type of profiles that we've been talking about uh, for supported apps, this is simply just to launch an app. So if you're using something else for email or if you're using a web browser that might be Firefox or Chrome or whatever, whatever, and whatever it is, you can launch it just by one bu button push and that's it. For an app launcher, I thought it was really, really nice. And I actually did like it for some of the system features as well. If I wanted to go back to, to the Finder, for example, or if I wanted to copy and paste something, I thought it was pretty useful for that. There are similar products on the market that do similar things to this, but this is probably one of the best prices you'll find for something like this. And again, it's, un, it's unclear. As of this review, I'm just pointing out what is available. Uh, this could change in six to, eight, you know, six to 12 months, I don't know. Logitech is clearly looking to expand the marketplace, as they call it, and third-party developers can offer all profiles as well. So they can offer extensions, basically, of what's already available on existing apps that are supported. There is a lot of runway here as to where this can go, but it's hard for me to predict where it could be in a year's time. I would only recommend that you get this if you are using any of the apps extensively that are already supported. If you're not, so if you're looking for DaVinci Resolve or CapCut or even Microsoft Office or something like that, wait and, and just see if or when those apps will be supported. Uh, right now, to try and integrate those, it's technically possible, but it doesn't work as well as it should. And so for that reason, I'd say wait, unless, of course, if you're a heavy Photoshop user or Lightroom Classic Illustrator, I think for the Adobe suite, you'll find that it's a lot better. And that's my review of the Logitech MX Creative Console, available at Best Buy now. You can read about it more by just clicking that link below. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.